you so much. Eclipse has me very business-like, but I hope that we can get into the flow. We'll just get a decent thing happening. Jay, all is fine. Jay, yeah. do you like Jay? Yeah. Jay, that resonates with. I see you right now. <laughs> so, what did you get up to today in your season hour experience so far? I just had a yoga session this morning with Kathy. What types of like? So it was a sequence. Yeah, it was centered around Aparigraha. Is that what it's called? Apara, apara, aparigraha? Yeah. Yeah. Um, non Working with the Correct. Yeah. Working with the grahas or the pools of the planets. Mm -hmm. The grahas are uh, the sun, Surya Graha, the moon, Venus, Lakshmi Graha. Mars, Mangala Graha, uh, Jupiter, Guru, Mercury, Guru, and Rahu and Ketu, which are the north and south nodes of the moon. And unlike Western astrology, Vedic astrology works with the north and south nodes of the moon, and the Grahas are kind of always exerting onto us and around us. So if you have a paria graha, it's I think my sense could have almost not to say ah is anti hmm. the opposite. Paria is being all stirred up and graha is the planets. Hmm. So even if Mercury is in retrograde or you have Rahu in your seventh house or and even though it was an eclipse yesterday, you got your Akaya Raha, you're expanding your I guess it means to me uh, sufficient care to ground myself in and through fluctuations of the celestial body at the celestial movements of the skies. That resonate with what you said? Mm -hmm. You might not have been thinking in terms of astrology, no. but I love astrology. Um, That's cool. What yeah. other concepts have been big so far? So far, we've been through the first three chakras. And then we've went through the previous yama. Was part of what you said um that exactly was some of the yamas and yeah we've been through like the first three chakras fairly in that way so far so far mm -hmm. oh it's the colors <laughs> of the chakras mm -hmm. Want to try your hand like but i'm sorry would you like to name the chakras i'm pointing to muladhara Okay, we can all practice saying the Sanskrit too. It feels good in my mouth, but I invite you to repeat after me. Muladhara. Muladhara. Anybody have a guess which one this is in English or Sanskrit or whatever? Svadhisthana Sacro. Does everybody say it? Play it. Play it in your mouth. Svadhisthana. 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 It's an energetic transmission from me to you. You get to practice the feel of the sound word. Svadhisthana. Svadhisthana. It's a little mantra. You bring vitality into the Svadhisthana every time you say it in Sanskrit. The sound of the Sanskrit language contains the resonance of the yogic frequency. Sanskrit is 
sacred language we believe many of us believe in yoga. Okay, so we have Muladhara. Perfect. Um, Manipura. 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 Do you feel your Manipura waking up? Manipura. 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 Anahata. 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 So we're kind of, I'm feeling it. You feel it? Good. Anahata. So it happens. Bro. We should that. 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 There's a little separation between the D and the H. We should that. 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 Oh, I feel so activated. Anya, Ajna, A J N A, Ajna. I mean, people say it differently. Ajna, 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 Ajna. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. My sense hurts killing me. Um, does anybody remember? Mm. Doing my thousand hour right now. We don't. We're not. You know, they don't require you to memorize these things. I don't think that you're going to be required to memorize the Sanskrit terms for all the chakras, are you? Yeah, Sahasrara. Feel that resonance in your skull as you touch your. I invite you to feel your top of your skull and notice the vibratory texture on your hand as you say the word sahasrara 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 each yogis believe that the words in Sanskrit contain the vibratory resonance of the energy itself so it's not which path that we're doing activating our sahas right by doing that. Okay, one more time. So I invite you to touch, if you can, palpate your okay. I love the human anatomy. Palpate your coccyx. Feel your coccyx, the bony landmark of your tubo. Make a little mantra seven times each of the steps for each of them. Muladara, 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 Close your eyes if you'd like to be in the awareness. Notice your prana maya kosha, your energy that is waking up, that is using our Sanskrit language to activate your energy levels. Enjoy this experience. Feel free if you choose to palpate the area in between your ribs. Do you feel the intercostal muscles? On the inner ridge of your rib cage, wherever the space is in between. And now, towards the top of your rib cage, the top of the inner crest of your rib cage. You can stop palpating and you just let your eight of your fingers or all ten fingers rest there. And that's, um, that's one place where we can feel Manipura. Manipura, 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 Manipura. 
gradually jerking your body up to the sternum. Um, at the center point of your two clavicles, by that junction, and on to the very top anterior point of your sternum. That's where two times line. That's one point of access for just the same color thing. Okay. Little bow tie, the little bow tie shaped muscle mm -hmm. and bone that you see your entire sternum, the very top of your sternum. Anahata, 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 Anahata. Right. Just climb to the top of your inferior corners of your top, please. Trace down your clavicle bones from the, uh, what is it? Go all the way into your bottom or the belly. All the way to the along the shoulder and see where they start to come up into the front. Yes. 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 Great. This is one access point. There's many different access points, but you should have. Then third eye is really tricky. I shouldn't say that. You can apply it next to. Um, find the depression, a slight depression perhaps up on the front of your skull. Our skulls are all different shapes, but just above, yeah, the very midpoint of your forehead, can you feel any sense of in the very center of your forehead? Do you feel any little point that feels like the very center of your forehead? Yeah? Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh, I see it in the oh, it's beautiful. Ajna, Ajna. Ajna. And then, last but not least, uh, palpate the roof of your mouth with the tip of your tongue. And notice there's a bony landmark on the inside of your mouth. Bony landmark on the inside of your mouth, at the very top of your mouth. Do you feel it? Mm -hmm. And you can imagine a straight line from that point all the way to the top of your skull and place your fingertips there. And it must be Mercury retrograde because I have a mental block on what that word was. That's so weird. Does anybody remember? Sahasrara. Ready, second. So let's go into a perfect can release effort. Take two breaths with your eyes closed to integrate. What's one thing you noticed, if anything? Nothing, you can say nothing. Could I get, I'm so sorry, could I get two blocks? Absolutely. Okay. What I notice is the woodpecker. Mm, yes. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes, is it here? Yeah. Two blocks coming up. Thank you so much. Those rocks are sharp over there. I have the same shoes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, oh, very nice. I really like this triple strap though. What's one thing that you perceive about maybe talking? Yeah, yeah. What qualities did you perceive in that awakeness? Light, color, vibration, tactile, kinesthetic. What tactile? Thank you. 
cool. Yeah, for me, when we did Sat Maserata, I really felt a sense of buzziness on my actual fascia. Like my fingertips felt as if they were feeling a vibration from a like, vibrating surface like this. Placing my fingertips on the one that's vibrating. Felt that on my foot. That's beautiful, yeah. So like you felt a um sure I understand connection, like you felt an uh, increasing you felt a connection rising up from your group. Ah, yeah, yeah, you felt the activation effects. Yeah, I, that seems appropriate. Yeah, so let's go into guided experience. I'm going to speak a little bit louder to make sure that you have a decent recording to study later on. Um, but now I invite us to go into a guided experience for just a few moments. So feel free to. Um, release your mental effort to be a student. The more that you encourage yourself to take in this experience, the more you'll learn. So I advise you to get comfortable. You can bring your hood up if you're wearing a hoodie. If you have fabric that you'd like to place over your eyes, you can. Um, we're simply going to go on a few minutes and um, we'll talk afterwards and you can ask me whatever you want with like my name and <laughs> um, great You could choose to close your eyes if you want your awareness to introvert a little more. You can choose to engage with Jai, ocean sounding breath, pranayam, on your exhale by utilizing a gentle constriction through the throat as you nasally inhale and exhale. A gentle throat constriction only on the exhale. Allow the sound of the ocean wave resonating through your throat, Vishuddha chakra, to invite you and bring yourself into a state of deep relaxation. And even the vibrational resonance of your throat anatomy as you perform in Jai Pranayam, that is a vibratory phenomenon, that is a sound. And it is possible perceive sound, feel the sound. If a sound is one of the five elements that travels through ether, which is space. And so allow the sound of your breath to guide you into space, into ether. I invite you to allow the soundscape of the world around us outside of the safe bubble and any sounds that may be occurring in the outer world could be allowed to contribute to your body experience they need not distract you even if there might be the sound of a dog or a gasoline engine or a woodpecker feel free to allow everything in your experience to introvert you more and more in your intention. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, our intention is to experience our chakras in connection with these goals. 
Sahana Baba Sahana Sahabi 
Shyam studies be enlightening, may we work to be better with great vigor, may no obstacle arise between us, peace, peace, and again, peace. Welcome yourself back gently. You could notice the breath re-entering the base of your lungs. You might bring attention to your fingertips or toes the tips of your eyelashes and your skull. There's no need to rush. But since we just closed this experience with the teacher-student mantra, I will say welcome to sound healing and the Anamaya Kosha. So, um, do people have journaling type stuff, writing type stuff. So why don't we take to five minutes and stream um, stream of consciousness um, jot or draw or feel in your heart what you experienced during this sound healing um, experience. everybody to process for like three to five minutes and then when you're done just come back to your I know, it's a little out of the
One minute. One more minute, is that okay? How's it going, Lucy? It's really wonderful. Great. Thank you. Do you happen to have a phone or device? Have a what? Some sort of phone or device. Something. I'm there. I do. Would you want me to get something? I'm so sorry. Yeah, I um, my phone is <laughs> making a recording. Yes. And I'd love to have there be like a timekeeping device? Sure. I have all of that on my phone. Um, normally, I wear an Apple Watch. Oh. But my Apple Watch uh, is charging. Yeah. Or I can show you and you can you know, start and stop. I would be comfortable. OK, thank you so much. Are these comfy? Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> You're like, yeah. I felt oh, wow. like weightless. Oh, wow. And this whole time, there's been a small monarch butterfly joining us. Yeah, yeah I was watching them. Yeah. This is great. All right, on continue.
Thank you. Yeah, I mean, would it be okay to just um, let the phone sit next to me? Well, as or long as it doesn't okay? deactivate because it's on my uh, facial recognition. Oh, that's Here's okay. all of the items. I'm just like trying to explain. Oh, is that all you want to look at the time? Perfect. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. We, we keep lunch at quiet, right? Yes. So, what just happened? We talked. We learned about. We talked. We palpated our chakras. We named them, and then we had, we had a sound bath. A sound bath, I could say. Mm -hmm. And then we closed with the teacher-student mantra, Om Sahana Bhavatu. And then we integrated with a few minutes of stream of consciousness journaling. And here we are. So I have one new concept to teach you. And then I'd love to open the floor. Uh, people feel called to share from their journals if that is allowed. But absolutely not required personal journey uh, I, I welcome questions about anything if your intention is how do I become the kind of yoga teacher that can do this you might want to ask me questions pertaining to that if you're somebody who's just interested in knowing the chakras deeper you could ask those types of questions uh, Let's discuss. But first, there's just one last concept that I feel called to teach you, which is um, Anna Maya Kosha. So I know it seems silly, but if you could please repeat after me, because it's in Sanskrit. Anna uh -huh. Maya, Maya Kosha. 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 Anna. Uh -huh. Maya Kosha. Kosha. Anna Maya Kosha. Um, Kosha. Five illusion sheets. Maya, you may recall, is illusion is a, is a stretch. It's a more extreme way to translate the word Maya, but it's perception. There we go. Anna is five. Maya is perception, and kusha is sheet or container. So if you visualize a Russian doll, a Russian doll, and inside the doll is another doll, and inside that 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 doll is one last doll, the fifth doll, and that doll is not able to be separated again. That's that tiniest Russian doll, the inside of the Russian doll. Great. So that tiniest doll is the Ananda Maya Kosha. The Ananda Maya Kosha, and it's the bliss body. So maybe during this experience, you got able, were able to connect to your bliss body. Maybe your thoughts and emotional fluctuations were quieted. Maybe you got a little taste of deep rest, deep relaxation, deep bliss. Maybe your mind went on a journey and then eventually lost itself. And so if you got past all those different fluctuations today, this is in the past few minutes, you may have had an experience with your Ananda Maya Kosha, your bliss body. Maybe you didn't, that's okay. If you did, that's what it was. Uh, which I always, Vishnana Maya Kosha is the next one. That's the intuitive wisdom body. It's the inner knowing. It's the one that is beyond logical thinking. People are nodding intuitively, and maybe that feeling is emanating out of your Vishnana Maya Kosha. Mm -hmm. That inner wisdom that is beyond uh, 
thought forms, emotional feelings. It's an additional deeper layer of the body. That is the reason why I'm not my such the fourth one. So I'm starting from the core and then going out. And building out from the inner intuitive wisdom body is the mental emotional body. Um, the mano maya kosha. You don't have to memorize all this. It just is the core thing. And you'll find it throughout your whole life. Mano maya kosha is my thinking and my emotional feelings. Um, yeah, the logical thoughts just passing through my mind. You know, happiness, sadness, you know, real feelings, emotions that we can name. Those things are all passing through the mind of my approach. Um, I find that one pretty straightforward. All this is very special. Um, outside of that is the pran, the prana. If you've heard the word prana before. So the prana maya kosha is the layer of us that is deals with prana. It is our chakras. It's also our respiratory system. Somewhat um, to the level that it contains prana, our respiratory circulation and nervous systems. And in addition to that, those anatomical systems are also citizens of the Manomaya Kosha. So Manomaya is musculoskeletal. And that's basically it. And those are the Russian dolls. Like I, I, I call them the Russian dolls. Mm -hmm. Nobody else says that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so by experiencing this sound bath, I feel that it's possible to have an experience across all five of the ana maya conscious the five perception layers and that's one reason why i practice sound healing not that it can help us in the goal of virtu chitti rodha or practicing cultivation of the mind okay i'm going to stop talking now my name is ocean pronouns a day. I'm doing a thousand dollars right now and my PhD in Great to see like uh, this work and so honored to have been you on your yoga journey. So I feel like we did a lot at this point already. Now we're in a break. Talk to me, ask me questions or tell me about your experiences from that. I mean, like, why do you, what interests you about these goals, you know, as a yoga teacher and training? About using instruments or generally curious or? I'm super curious in this like modalities of tapping with my energy and feeling. This was my first experience with um, sound healing, but, um, for me, as we were going through, this is the first time in my life I've ever experienced this, and I don't know what specific goal it came from, but of not being able to differentiate if the sound was outside of me or inside of me. Like the woodpecker, I can very distinctively feel that's outside and over there, but one of the louder sounds it felt indistinguishable of like outside and inside or just like whether that sound is here coming from within which I found is really um, and I felt throughout the experience on at different points like at some points I felt very vibratory energy on that outside on my skin and at other points of the, the sound journey I felt um, that energy vibrating within and traveling through my body and 
kind of building and collecting at different points in my body and then it almost felt like it would bubble up and collect and finally pop open which was such a beautiful interesting sensation just say that one more time that, yeah that last part um i felt as if like i felt the vibrations the energy traveling through my body to different parts and as if it would collect in different areas and almost feel as if that energy would bubble up and eventually pop open and release which was really powerful chitta vrittis yeah. chitta vrittis are Vritti means whirlpool and chitta means um, things it's just like these kind of fluctuations in body energy and mind one thing that came up is that that reminds me of thank you also for sharing it yeah. sounds like a deep like meaningful experience so thank you. space for that yeah <laughs> share about these things it, it, it sounds like it touched you it gave you a experience may i weave in some concepts is that okay yes, yeah. um the other thing that, that you touched on is that inside versus outside and the thing is that our eardrums, if you visualize your eardrum, it's vibrating mm -hmm. in order to allow you to hear. But the problem is that that's a little bit of an ableist myth, in my personal opinion. That's the only way to listen. Mm -hmm. The vibration of the eardrum is only one way of listening. Your brain, you listen through your brain. And also the sound is a vibration. Sure. You listen with your brain for sure. Absolutely. But in addition, when this frequency, uh, A440, when that gets close to your body, this fascia right here, it's vibrating along with the bowl. Mm. The matter, the material over here is affected by the pressure wave that is this sound traveling through the ether, which is the yoga chain, and impacting this area of fascia, because the bowl is really close to here. So much so that you put something, oops, I don't know, put something on the surface, you know, you feel it. So when you said, I didn't know if the sound was outside of me or inside of my body, um, your mana, my kosha, was literally vibrating differently as the sound, the, like physics wise, washed over you and your cells vibrated in a different way. At least your eardrum. I mean, that's for sure because you heard it and perceived sound. Your eardrum was vibrating at this frequency. Probably more tissues on this one too. So that's like a, some validation and concepts around what you. If you just want to share and be witnessed, please say that, and then I won't riff off of what you say. But sometimes sharings give me, remind me to talk about concepts. I have a slightly similar experience with outside versus inside. It was a weird sensation just going through my body. And I consciously like not feel that. <laughs> but my body definitely wanted to feel that outside energy, sort of. And it was kind of hard to figure out what was going on. <laughs> but it was really interesting. It was definitely interesting. It did feel like what you were saying about me. Wanted it to be external. It was. Um, no, like when I felt it, it was just a weird sensation. So I had to just like. What was it? I don't know. I just never really felt that type of like. She was surrounding me so much. Oh, surrounded with energy. Wow. Yeah. 
Sure. And how it was for you? I was just a little curious. I thought it was magical. It was great. Um, I've experienced um, singing bowls before, but not chakra bowls and not the difference in tone. I'm curious if you put them always in the same position or you just put them down whenever you take them out and then you improvise each time you lead a group in sound bathing. So you can think on it as I go through my notes. The answer <laughs> you... is no. No. This happened completely by accident, one could say, or intuitively. Great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, I did not have uh, an experience of, of outside versus in. Mine was all inside. I felt um, vibration and energy moving both up and down and sideways. Matter of fact, at one point, the sound was very loud and I would uh, periodically open my eyes to see which color to try to correlate with which chakra I was feeling. And I think I might've been right once or twice, you know, but I don't know them all that well. But I did definitely feel uh, sacral connections and in my throat and in my third eye area. Um, and so I think it, it brought my hand to whatever area I was feeling uh, for maybe a, just a brief massage or, or just a tweak in, in you know, the way I was sitting, moving my feet or whatever. Um, I constantly try to lengthen and renew my breathing. So I was practicing my uh, ocean breathing. So I was doing that. And um, I guess that was, oh, that was really it. I did look to see the colors. It was a wonderful experience. Um, I, I do some forest bathing in the summer and in the winter. And I just love that, the way it envelops me. And this was really very nice. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Great. So you already have a practice of bathing, mm -hmm. of working with your prana body as you're a forest bather. Mm -hmm. So you were actively involved in the experience and you were consciously choosing to allow energy to move, mm -hmm. feeling it. Nice. I also noticed that since you were seated, you know, you were not necessarily going into Shavasana. Too, Definitely which is, not. Which is totally awesome. And, and, you know, that's interesting. Uh, being curious. A right. bit I didn't go far from the moment. Yes. So I was really very present. Um, it was good for you. It was very good, That's yeah. I enjoyed stuff. being seated and I particularly didn't lay down because I wanted to kind of see, feel it all up and going on. Yeah, and can I share what I said earlier? Absolutely. And so like, it was really interesting for me as a practitioner uh, because what I had the opportunity to do was, well, most people were in hammocks, like, completely journeying or resting. I saw very little movement. 
physical level, mm -hmm. and that's totally fine. Um, because Nancy was seated as a sound healing practitioner, I noticed subtle postural cues, which gave me data to respond to. And so I noticed a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And to me, that indicated to me that there was a third eye activation. There was something going, something happening. You know, notice without judgment. So mm -hmm. I have no judgment as to what was happening. I just noticed this gesture and I thought maybe there's some movement occurring in the third eye. And that allowed me to play a little bit more into this goal. Like a partnership. And then I noticed here, and these nerves in the lower extremities are, I think, all rooting up to the sciatic nerve and nerve endings that go down up into the pelvis. Spinal cord stops, and then you have other nerves that branch down from the pelvis to innervate the lower extremities. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think it. And so then I leaned into this goal and I saw this. Mm -hmm. And lastly, there was a little mm -hmm. throat so, maybe. Here, yeah, and I leaned into the throat and the heart goals. So nice. well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you did. I got it, but I did, might not have known I was getting it. It was feeling good. <laughs> yeah. It was nice. And looping back to your initial question, like, yeah. You don't have to use the chakra bowls. I I like the chakras and I like bowls. Mm. And the colors are really helpful. So as a vibrational healer, it allows me to respond to what I'm noticing mm. within myself or outside of myself and anchor and ground the vibration of one of the chakra's frequencies accordingly. Mm. And so it's kind of like, I guess, the words. But there's many other ways to perform sound here. It's all the compulsive materials. So you were asking me about, about what, I, there was part of a question at the beginning. The so, question. Uh, well, why do I have these goals? Right. If you always put them in the same position or if it's random and you answered my question right away, it's however they come to you is where you set them down, which I appreciate because that means that no two experiences are the same, obviously, because of the way you play. And uh, that's great. So we know that we might have heard something that no one else has ever heard before. Yeah. If, if somebody comes to me and I, did, I do an intake assessment or they tell me, wow, I'm working with a huge shock of safer imbalance. Or maybe they'll say, well, I don't want to make up numbers, but like. Headaches or something? Okay, cool, yeah. headache. Yeah. You know, that's, so then I will, I will, I would probably reach intuitively for the crown chakra bowl. Mm -hmm. And so I might choose to focus, like there could be an entire session just with crown chakra and heart chakra. We could put all these down. Or we could emphasize the crown and the heart and let the other bowls be available. So if somebody wants to be make choices about mm -hmm. bowl configuration. Yeah. And I so it's a good question. And what I what did happen to me while I was in the space was the way it was before. I eventually reached for one of them and actually just picked it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I sounded it and I let it. And so some of the bowls I, I reached and I just held them. Mm. And then one other thing I did was I brought it around like this. See that. Yeah, but what's interesting is there would be an effect if 
I traveled with the bowl, mm. which I didn't choose to do. But like, it's, it can be really interesting to, if you're being. So I'm gonna bring the bowl near to you if that's okay. If that's not okay. But I'm shaking it. <laughs> So see the experience of having the bowl brought to you. So loud. <laughs> is it loud? Is it? It's loud to me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is this loud? I think so. <laughs> I've never gotten that close to it. Mm -hmm. That's true, I guess it could be fun. Yeah. Um, so the vibration gets really close, can get to be brought really close mm. too. That has an effect. So, in a way, like experimenting, like and getting feedback and learning what, how these sounds or the sounds of whatever even your own voice or rattle, whatever implements you choose to use, how they impact your own body. And yeah, you kind of are feeling it. So, um, but yeah, so that's a good experience. Like I have not had the bowl, I actually have not received bowls like around my body like that wow. and so I don't necessarily know how close is optimal or like how not to play so I learned to um, what else I just feel completely like blissed out right now. Like I've never felt before. Um, I'm usually like a really anxious person. During that, especially like after I chose, I feel like I just feel like a little bit. But you still feel blissed out. Yeah. So you have that. On a my kosher activation, actually. Yeah, I think so. Like that feeling after a really nice asana class. Mm -hmm. Is it, mm -hmm. it? It might be similar to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, almost exactly. Yeah. So some ways to ground, like feeling blissed out, is to enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> and then also. to walk mm -hmm. and eat, and lunch can be good. Um, yeah, feeling blissed out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good way. Mm -hmm. uh, That's cool too, you can be in, be in the experience. Yeah, that was super powerful. I don't think I've ever experienced sound healing before. Um, Especially, yeah, like the whole tracing of the bowls was very. I mean, I could just feel like my crown chakra was radiating, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah, very activating. Yeah. Activating the chakras. Yeah. Um, I also. It's initiatory. Let, let, if you allow me to just riff a little yeah, bit. No, of course. We were all on a journey mm -hmm. as healers, mm -hmm. and it's taking the shape of. A 200 hour training mm -hmm. 
and so one thing that might might be happening is um, that you're open to elevating your vibrational frequency of your chakras. Mm -hmm. So they're open to reattuning themselves to a new way of being because some aspect of you decided to become a teacher. So other people could experience the same sounds and like a random person walking by and like not feel a chakra activation, but like there's an openness mm -hmm. that's possible if like we decide in our heart that like, oh, I call to become a yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. well, I'm ready to, so yeah. Mm -hmm. But also yay for doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. What was your next thing though? Oh, I was just gonna say, because you made that comment about traveling through space, you know, space being a, um, kind of a journey. Um, I said traveling through space. You said something about when we were talking about the time, going on a journey, we have to return. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was just like talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. but it stuck with me. Stuck with you, resonated. Yeah. yeah um, Great. But like, I really felt it in my hands. I felt like I was holding my hands out here, even though they were here. It was very weird. Like, I felt like the energy in my hands was like pushing away from my body. Have you guys ever done like you go into a door frame and you like push your hands away and then they like rise up? That was really interesting. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not these that run. Yeah. In from the center of your palm. Mm -hmm. There's more than just the chakras. Mm -hmm. And there's like a little chakra thing. Mm. That's a technical term, sorry. <laughs> from here, I forget. We, it's like content. So it's like a very specific term. Mm -hmm. You can look it up and send it to you if you want. And then there's five little tiny nadis that mm -hmm. go out to each of the fingers. Sometimes when people have prana activation in their hands, for some people, it means that they're called to be a Reiki master or do hands-on. Like Nerdy. you may be a tactile learner, mm -hmm. or you may be somebody who uses your hands, mm -hmm. practice with mudras, mm -hmm. or do hand mm -hmm. massage. Mm -hmm. yeah. It could just be that you have fun activation in your hands. Mm -hmm. So little of that could be a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you notice without noticing without judgment. Yeah, it's the highest form of spiritual practice. So yeah. it's like, wow, amazing. Yeah. One more thing. Yeah, of course. What are you getting a PhD? Creativity for process psychology. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Love from there. Buffalo. Let's see Buffalo. What is? That entail you doing research, like our PhDs on your research things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can talk about my journey, yes, my please. life experience. Please do. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. It aligns well with information. So I grew up as a musical child, like quasi sort of prodigy music kid. Mm -hmm. I was a music nerd. Mm -hmm. And um, I loved instruments. I loved piano lesson. I mean, since I was five, I would take an instrument for one or two years and then drop it and go to another instrument. And then drop it and go to another instrument and drop it and go to another instrument. And the whole time I thought I was a musician and I did not realize that I was also a sound healer mm -hmm. or that or I was called in that direction or whatever. So I went to music conservatory for music composition. And um, I moved to New York City. I went to music conservatory at uh, the Juilliard School. And I, I studied very seriously Western music. And that brought me a lot of joy to work with the energy of different potential sounds and different musicians and guide them into a, a process. I loved being a composer mm -hmm. because I loved 
guiding processes. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered that I was also an extrovert. So I started being paid to teach. And I started teaching children how to raise their vibration, AKA being a music teacher. But for me, it was always very creative and holistic, mm -hmm. um, involving original music, by kids, um, things like that. And then I gradually became less happy in that work and um, got into my PhD in the School of Education during that time. And uh, fortunately, it was still aligned because it was musical creativity and the flow process. So I stayed with that. But simultaneously, I resigned from teaching children and sort of like seamlessly transitioned into being a yoga instructor and um, healer and artist. So I, I used to be more of a musician, composer, and music teacher to children. And now I'm doing very much the same thing, just in a hugely different context, mm -hmm. which is more the space that we're in now. And um, I've been doing that fully uh, for about two years. Uh, but in the meantime, I did my 200 hour training at the college, did my 500 hour in a place called Light Pro Yoga. And I'm doing my 1,000 hour with a place in LA, which is facilitated by the internet. I love, I do well with distance learning. Mm -hmm. So I've been enjoying all of that. And um, I do this work of sound, at sound bath, um, in addition to being a Reiki master. So those are parallel channels, mm -hmm. parallel frameworks. Um, and right now I'm really enjoying offering uh, and su supporting my private clients by offering them private sessions in addition to Reiki trainings. But Cleo is just an amazing yogi who is a beautiful friend. And um, we've been friends for a few years. And um, so she invited me to come and be the sound healing and healings. Hat wearer, but Cleo is also a very wise and talented energy healer as well. And I've been really lucky to have the opportunity to study with her as a teacher. But yeah, I love her so much. So that's like my official. So yeah, now I'm just I'm just enjoying this just this direction I'm heading in my career. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I shed a lot in my journey of becoming mm -hmm. a yoga teacher, becoming a full time yogi art healer. Mm -hmm. Been very it's been challenges and uh, yeah, yeah. So we can talk about that. But that's how I came to modalities of intuitive vibrational health, such as music, sound baths, and Reiki, therapy, dream work, and intuitive therapeutic vibration. And after that, I can give to the world. It's really my gift to myself because these things are my life support. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have all those things, I wouldn't be. I'm just like it's it's, it's fortunate to have the ability to so focus on my life. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So we'll have a modality? session next week at the okay. same the same slot, awesome. and we'll have a dream work experience. Awesome. That's what's coming up. We'll do dream yoga, we'll do dream yoga. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Yeah. Well, that sure. dreams guide us. Yeah. 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 Our chakras are doing stuff while we're sleeping. Mm. Yeah. Is that possible? We have these funny ideas because we grew up in a society and a culture. And so it's almost like the on switch is I'm awake. Uh, the off switch is I'm asleep and nothing's happening. Mm. I'm not saying this about you. I'm just saying this about yeah. No, I know. mindset. Yeah. And yeah. as you can imagine, so much happening while we're sleeping. Mm -hmm. The release of mala, Sanskrit term for like waste. Mm -hmm. So we're turning food into waste. We're releasing toxins out of our endocrine system. Our kidneys are filling up with waste, mm -hmm. toxic waste, literally. Our liver is building up, filling up with toxic waste. You know, if you had a glass of wine before bed, you're taking the toxins out of that wine, just speaking like science based mm -hmm. um, sulfides, the toxins, mm -hmm. or whatever your toxins are, and they're being detoxified as you sleep. So, like, a bunch happens when you sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so who's to say that your chakras are in your bed here, in your other philosophy there can be less like spinning. Spinning discs of light is one thing, one way that they of you. And so who's to say that when you're sleeping, you stop. Because if they stop, it means that they're not alive anymore. Mm -hmm. So dream yoga is a yoga of it. And that'll be it. So you can someone who's like even really interested in this, like what avenue can you suggest of like letting it or like incorporate this in a daily practice? Um, since going back to the original days of yoga, the most primitive way of learning yoga was from the teacher student relationship. And so there's a lineage. And so you can always, you will always have Cleo. She is your she's in the gallery. And I don't know who your other I think she is your lead instructor. And then there's multiple like me. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So we you have all of us, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then you also but but you also have Cleo. Mm -hmm. I, anything well, I don't want to speak for her, but like there's a relationship there and that resource is from Yeah, I mean, and if you want to learn to do what someone else does, approach that person. So, like, you could receive some additional training from Clea, doing like some private yoga sessions. And it's outside the scope yeah. of your 200 hour potentially. I don't know. I can see your scope. But you have a scope. We're in 200 hour right now. So, if you want to learn more, Or you can approach me or you can approach Cleo. Um, that's what I would do. Or you can do, you can like, or you can go to a training. You can go to a, how to integrate it into your healing practice. Yeah, we'll hear it. So just like contemplating the way that sound plays a role in your yoga class. Is it soundtrack to a bowl? Will you choose to chant and sing? Yeah. 
That's like a whole other. It's like a whole other workshop that we can do. Mm-hmm. It's like sound healing in the yoga class, sequencing. This was more like sound healing. Than that. Does that help? So you have like the seven bowls here, but I'm assuming like is there a way you can just incorporate one bowl? Like are there different healing sounds or like how does that work or is those chakra based bowls? Can I be real with you? Yeah. You can do sound healing by striking sticks together. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Glasses different amounts of water. You've heard people play the glasses, Mm -hmm. metal balls, wooden balls, drums, all of those things are. So many possibilities. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we had, we were doing uh, some lesson in practice. We had a little like rattle. That was fun. So you played the rattle? Yeah. And and so, yeah. And what was it? What was one effect of the rattle? It was really like stimulating. Like when I yeah. was with Rasna and both of you did it to me, and you could feel like the individual particles like inside that rattle, just like rattling all your energy around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so for me, rattle is a, it's a, it's like a shamanic instrument. Mm-hmm. And it's, you can sort of study the history of the instrument, mm-hmm. but like it's to raise energy, mm-hmm. it's stimulating. It's, mm-hmm. Brahmana, mm-hmm. uplifting the prana. Mm-hmm. It's to sensitize you. It's mm-hmm. meant to, yeah, even if you remember, like, yeah, anyway. Yeah. But other stuff like clapping, mm-hmm. it's very clear. If you don't have sage, mm-hmm. if you're trying to smudge something, mm-hmm. and you don't have any sage, you can just mm-hmm. clap, and you're kind of like clearing. It's astringent. Yeah. Astringent is a flavor of. But if you can imagine astringence as a sound mm-hmm. later, clapping is astringent. So that's kind of my snarky answer. Mm-hmm. Um, these are beautiful <laughs> and they're color coded and they're right. so powerful. But you don't absolutely do not have to use them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What else can you use? So many things. I love the bells. I love. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know how dreams can send you messages from me, hearing this, like what you're saying, like, just thinking about something like, can you send me a certain message to your body? Like, it's, no, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yes. <laughs> like, it is possible to receive intuitive messages from a sound healing type experience such as this um, in the same way that it is possible to receive guidance from a dream. So which one of your five bodies do you think would be activated by the receiving of guidance, intuitive guidance? Is it going to be the, this is not a test, the mm-hmm. musculoskeletal, like this, the first one is the body body, the prana body, the thinking and feeling body, the intuitive wisdom body, or the bliss body. Which body is going to be receiving intuitive guidance, like a message from a dream? Bliss body is involved, but the bliss body is like pure light, I'm like the sensation. I'm blissed out. I can't even think of it. <laughs> so probably not the intuitive wisdom body. So any experience that relaxes you enough to drop down to the Vajana Maya Kosha will most likely put you in a position to be open to receive intuitive wisdom. The secret is the intuitive wisdom is like the enemy, it's out there. You put yourself in a position to receive it and then you will it's a dreaming and a vision and like you have 
Beautiful question. So yeah, linguistically, the dream doesn't send a message. I receive a message from the dream if I'm open to it. But yeah, I think it's a short answer. Yay. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Would you like to hear more? Uh, this is like a pretty yes or no, I guess. Uh, have you ever worked with uh, anyone who's deaf who does not have their sense of hearing? Somebody who's deaf or hard of hearing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they feel it more like just through their skin and other. Let me think back to it. Okay. Um, no, I have. I have the person, the client that I had that was hard of hearing was in a yoga class. Mm -hmm. So I've never performed sound healing for somebody mm -hmm. um, who has a different hearing mm -hmm. But if I did, I would want to accommodate their experience. Mm -hmm. And so if they booked a private sound healing session, we would probably have an intake discussion about mm -hmm. as a person, like they would they'll probably self-identify. And so then I would say, well, wow, I'm so curious what inspired you to come to a private sound healing session. Mm -hmm. I understand that you identify as a deaf person. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell me more about what your heart might be hoping to receive mm -hmm. from this experience? Um, can you tell me, and then intake assessment, like, can you tell me a little bit about your well being? Um, sort of like, are you drinking water? Are you like sleeping regularly? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we can go through some intake assessment things. Mm -hmm. You can get like a prescriptive one too. Mm -hmm. and you can get data in addition to like their ability to hear. Yeah. And then we would do a session just like in your class. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's possible to have people lie down and maybe not with glass, but yeah. with other materials. You can rest bowls and things on people and mm -hmm. let them vibrate. Like that. Yeah. So, I mean, imagine the vibrations here. And yeah. Mm -hmm. that be. Yeah. Even yeah. if you don't get it here, you feel a tactile sensation. Mm -hmm. That's probably the short answer to your question. Yeah. Yeah. I was just wondering if you knew or if you had any clients in that you described the experience or. No, not, I, not yet. Yeah. I'm welcome. Yeah. I'm welcome to ask. Yeah. I'm going, to, I'm going to go to the UK and do this for a couple of weeks mm. in July. Maybe, maybe that'll happen. Do you mind if I be excused? Maybe no, actually, it's 1143. Okay. And so <laughs> I think that we started 15 minutes late okay. and we ended 15 minutes late. So, so I'll set up lunch and then I'll meet you all at the table in a little bit time for lunch all right let's close as well um can we just do three shreems absolutely shreem is the bija or root mantra of the goddess lakshmi who is connected to the planet of venus who is the graha of today just as we started with the party of graha the graha of today is venus the planet of venus god lakshmi and her mantra, one of them is the word shreem, S-H-R-E-E-M, three times. Shreem. Shreem.
beautiful watch. Gracing them, but it was 143. And I love you. So my family started using that as a sign. And I just feel like I was feeling very tall to this. The fact that you like said that that number at that end was just like very young. This is, I'm in the right place at the right time. Like really hit home of like this is something that I could be a very powerful tool for me. It's like a confirmation of like yeah, this is something for you to do and work with and be called for it. So wow. <laughs> the fact that you know and such a random like number that. that that you you answered that it's eleven forty three. Wow. <laughs> you can't make, you can't Those are yeah. <laughs> That's a synchronization. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm.